In today's show, we've got news about more, oh God, Disney layoffs, high-speed trains coming to Disney Springs, uh, some news about Disneyland Paris updates, headline news, trivia, and oh, so much more on today's Disney Parks Podcast. Welcome to the Disney Parks Podcast with your hosts, Tony Castlenova from DisneyByTheNumbers.com and Park Hopper John from WDWParkHoppers.com. Keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the podcast at all times and get ready for the Disney Parks Podcast. All right, everybody, welcome to the show. So glad that you were here. How are you doing tonight, Uncle Tony? Good. What did you do this weekend? Oh, I'm glad you asked me that, Uncle Tony. (laughs) Um, I Okay, so a couple weeks ago, you got to go for a couple nights at the Riviera Resort, Mm -hmm. Disney's new Riviera Resort. And uh, I got spanking brand new. And uh, I got to crash with you one night, and that was awesome awesome had a blast uh and then this past weekend uh our good friends and uh top tier travel provider destinations to travel our good friend shannon and the team uh let my wife and i uh, have uh two nights and said uh, you could stay in one resort uh but we'd love for you to travel to different resorts and uh check those out and so we stayed one night over at a disney's wilderness lodge boulder ridge the dbc resort and that was great that was saturday night which you came and hung out right Mm -hmm. you know that was cool yep Yep. and then uh yesterday afternoon we checked into disney's mm, polynesian resort (laughs) bora bora bungalows oh Oh, my Disney guys. <laughs> okay. When I see Shannon again, I will bow down at her feet and cry holy. Uh, I enjoyed I, I enjoyed the, uh, the uh, Wilderness Lodge Resort, the mm-hmm. Boulder Ridge. I loved it. Uh, did, I, I did not realize I was, I don't know where my head was at. Uh, probably should have gone to Copper Creek because uh, it's newer. Yeah, uh, but I have seen those rooms. I've been in those rooms. Uh, our friend, that's her home resort, so I right. got to spend some time in there. Uh, but I have not spent the night over in Boulder Ridge, so I thought, you know what, this is going to be fun. Had a blast. It was awesome. It was gorgeous. It was quiet. Showing its age a little bit uh, to the tune of like there's these little black boxes underneath the TVs that. Um, have these little slots in them. What are those things called, Tony? I can't remember. What are the what are those? Uh, well, they, they they look like they take a DVD. Think not DVC. DVD. <laughs> DVD player. Yeah, they had a DVD player in all of them, and the TVs were a little bit smaller, mm. and they weren't the newer TVs that would allow you to stream, which was a bit of a problem. Because we were, we had some plans that night that we had to uh, adjust, uh, but I had a blast. We uh, we wound up going over to the. Uh, uh, it's not the Roaring Fork; it's the other one. Guys the, uh, Point. Guys are Point. Mm-hmm. Had a, a wonderful dinner. Our buddy Kara joined us. Yeah. Uh, we had our buddy Jasmine with us. So, uh, so we did had you, five folks there. With did you the ask uh, down in the community room if they had DVDs for you to borrow? I did not. Uh, we didn't have that kind of time, and I wasn't going to sit and watch DVDs when I could literally just grab my uh, New World iPad and just go watch it on Disney Plus, <laughs> you know. Uh, and we really didn't. We really didn't. You had twenty twenty technology from the future. <laughs> from the future, uh, and then uh, once we got back to the room, and I think you split, uh, we went back to the yeah. room for a little while, and about two or three hours later, we were like, "Man, a pizza sounds." Hmm. A pizza sounds amazing. Can we get a pizza? So I grabbed another piece of technology called a cell phone. I was like, okay, Papa John's will be here in 20 minutes. And uh, came yeah. right to the front gate, knocked on the door. Well, that was a mistake. <laughs> Did you have it delivered to the right address or the wrong address this time? Uh, uh, wrong address. 
<laughs> again? With the Fort Wilderness. Again. With the Fort freaking Wilderness. Because when you go to the, the Papa John's app and you type in Wilderness Lodge, it gives you the address and you click yeah. enter. But the, it's it's somehow they go to Wilderness Lodge or Fort Wilderness every dang time. Wow. Uh, yeah. So that was great. Loved, yeah, because loved Disney it, had a- doesn't have uh, any uh, room service uh, uh, currently mm-hmm. operational. There's no pizza service no. or anything like that. Because uh-uh. yeah, uh-uh. typically you could order a, a pizza to your room at, at any Disney resort. And even when I checked in, they, they said the same thing. We have no room service delivery at all. And I said to him, I said, it's weird, you will bring my bags to my room, but you won't bring pizza. I said, what's the yeah. difference between the two? Yeah, <laughs> so uh, we checked out uh, early, and the idea was we were going to go over to the Polynesian Resort, check in, like drop our bags off, let them know we were there, because I had changed the time we were going to check in mm-hmm. earlier in the day, and at 11 a.m., I got a text message saying, your room's not quite ready yet, and I'm oh. like, mm. well then, right. so we're like, man, we should be able to check in by 12 or 1. Right. So we go bebopping over to the to the uh, uh, the quiet pool over there, a couple of spots behind Pago Pago, and mm. we're hanging out in the pool for an hour, two hours, two and a half hours, <laughs> and I'm starting to get like, oh, what's going on here? At like five minutes until four, mm-hmm. uh, the text came through saying that our room was ready. Ding. <clears throat> So, <laughs> little little Donnie, little party myth about two. that. Your room is ready. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we got the notification, and uh, we went, and I walked in to do the video, which you haven't seen any of the videos. I've linked, I think, all of them, if not all of them, to the Facebook.com forward slash Disney Parks podcast. You could definitely see all of them, plus a bunch of pictures over it. Uh, facebook.com forward slash WDW Park Hoppers because uh, I've got all that stuff over there as well. I walked in and the smell of that teak wood hit me and I'm like, mm. and my body instantly was like, oh, this is home. This is so home because the the whole, our house, we call it Hale Donahue and Hale is a Hawaiian word and we we love that we love the culture and it resonates with us. Every room in that little bungalow was filled with so much magic and surprises. Mm. Like you know, like the the bed they had in the Riviera Resort that was uh, not the Murphy bed, but the little the, one underneath the, the TV, trundle, the trundle bed. Yeah, they had two trundle beds in this resort. Yep. Uh, in this bungalow, and one of them had Lilo and Stitch asleep in the little hammock. Right. The other one had the electric water pageant parade floats. I know. Oh my god, it was so awesome! Yeah. All of the artwork on the wall. I tried to steal all. I mean, I tried to take pictures of all of it. <laughs> and yeah, I almost took the electrical water pageant thing too. I yeah. was like, how 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 bolted to the wall is this? <laughs> what tools yeah. do I need that I can go home and get and come back? <laughs> <laughs> they they have uh, the shower with the rain head yeah. and yeah. and the everything and the 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 wood and the stone, the smell of the resort. The beds were amazing. Mm-hmm. And then we walked outside and we saw that view of the Magic Kingdom and mm-hmm. you know the Joe Potter going by and we're like, Oh my God. And then we found the switch that turns the music on. Oh yeah. Outside. Yeah. It plays the resort music, which was great. I except I don't think that's Christmas resort music. to music. I think it's the music from the magic kingdom because that radio frequency they're using was the one for whatever the fireworks show was, which is, or, you know, whatever. So I think it's the music that they're playing in the magic kingdom. Not unless they're playing Mela Kaliki Maka in the Magic Kingdom. They could be. <laughs> yeah, cause, no, it was it was a resort music. We've been hearing it over the pool for hours. Uh, but then we we put our feet in the because that switch pool. too also didn't go on until fireworks started. But since there yeah, weren't no, any fireworks, was, yeah, ours was on at yeah. four o'clock in the afternoon because yeah, there's no fireworks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's just like every little thing had some magic in it, and yeah. it was great. The seating. Uh, in the guest bedroom, the headboard was surfboards. I mean, it was just 
I could go on and on and on about it. We don't have time for that. Um, but guys, if you're a DVC member or know someone who is, and you could beg, borrow, and steal the points to spend at least one night in the in the um, in the Bora Bora bungalows at the Polynesian Resort, please do so. Mm. Completely worth it. Sleeps eight somewhat comfortably. Sleeps six really comfortably. Mm-hmm. Um, sleeps four even better. Sleeps three amazingly. I know that for a fact. Two, um, you can even but, switch beds at night. <laughs> that's right. Uh, or, the guys. Have different rooms. <laughs> but uh, but Tony's experience and my experience, we yeah. owe to Shannon and her team over at Destinations to Travel. Uh, I would be saying this even if we hadn't just come off a great weekend. But mm-hmm. guys, these, like I said, this is our top tier travel agents. They're amazing. Uh, these folks know how to get it done. Uh, and it doesn't cost you a dime. They're going to save you time. They're going to save you money and they're going to give you peace of mind uh, because if something goes wrong while you're on your vacation, when you finally get to go traveling on your vacation, something goes wrong. Uh, And it's not a matter of if, especially during these trying times, it's probably a matter of when Uh, you don't have to stress it. You can just call up your travel agent and go, Hey, we got a problem here. Will you please help me fix it? And they'll fix it for you. Uh, with a smile and again doesn't cost you a dime and there's so many amazing uh, uh offers going on for disney and other places around the world universal's got stuff going on if that's your that's your flavor uh but guys uh go to disneyparkspodcast.com forward slash the letter d the number two travel there's a short little quick form uh a little survey fill that out and someone from Destinations to Travel will get back to you. Once again, that's DisneyParksPodcast.com forward slash the letter D is the number two travel for Destinations to Travel. And Shannon, from Tony, myself, to all of your team, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, it's been a great partnership, and we're so excited about what the future holds for you guys. Uh, and these few days that you've given us have meant the world to us. So thank you very much. Yep, it was great. Good time. Yep. Uh I got two quick show and tells, and then we can get on to the news. Uh, This got released on Mickey's birthday. uh, Mm -hmm. Which is? uh, In November 18th, I think. I can't remember the name off the top of my head. Uh, It's it's called Inside Mickey. Uh, This was in my supermarket. It's by Centennial Entertainment. Uh, Lots of great little pictures and stories of Mickey and all his friends and all that. That's a good one. And then Time uh, did this one. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's called uh, Disney, the Park, the Movie, the Magic. This is more of Walt, uh, obviously. A great picture of Walt right there that we've all seen playing in the sand. Um, Yep. uh, You know, so that. And if you live in Florida and are interested in getting the Disney license plate, I will have uh, this PSA for you. Uh, Number one, you have to right now pre-order. They have to have a certain amount of pre-orders before they will print the actual license plate. Uh, Currently, the only way to do that is to go to your local tax place where you would do your driver's license and all that. Uh, Mine, in my county, Orange County, you can only make an appointment. You couldn't just, you know, walk up on the building and, you know, get an appointment. So you have to make it online. And I was in and out in less than 10 minutes. So you get a voucher that allows you to pre-order it. And they have to meet a certain minimum uh, to do that. So if you want to see this plate get printed, (laughs) go get your pre-order voucher uh, now. Uh, so that we could all have these license plates. I don't know what the minimum was. I was trying to squeeze that out of them. Uh, It didn't sound like the person I was talking to was like, you know, she's like, oh, I don't do this very often. I was like, oh, that's not good news. Uh, But Mm. uh, she got it done. It's 30, yeah, 30 bucks. And uh, if you pay by credit card, they charge you $3 to process your credit card, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, $3 to process your credit card. So I paid uh, whatever. Anyway, go do it because uh, I think most of this money is going to charity anyway. I think it's Give Kids the World, I think, is going to be the charity. So you're, you're, you know, you're going to have a really cool looking license plate and uh, the money's going to charity. So do, do. It's a win win. You know? That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. Uh, all right. Is there anything else you want to throw in there? I uh, know. 
Well, there's nothing else we can do, boys and girls, except get into the, the news. And now, Disney Parks Podcast News. Well, now we've got our first chance to get our very own spider bot from Avengers Campus at Disneyland Resort. And if you have no idea what that means, you know, uh, <laughs> Disneyland Resort's A, not open. Uh, Avengers Campus is B, not, not open. open. And not everybody knows what a spider bot is. So spider bots are the latest web, that's capital E, cap W, capital E, capital B, apparel from Avengers Campus. And they will be available in the downtown Disney district at Disneyland Resort at both and both Walt Disney World and Disneyland Resort backlot premier shop beginning on December 4th. So uh, every superhero needs a friendly sidekick to protect their neighborhood. And these spider bots put in your control, put you in control of the action to battle opponent opponents with programmed combat and defensive abilities. They could crawl backwards, forwards, crouch, spin 360 degrees, stare down uh, with their laser eyes, attack opponent spider bots, and even blast off their shields. Pew, pew. Um, I think spider bots come from the uh, um, Spider-Man? Into the Spider Verse movie, um. yes, Spider Man Into the Spider Verse animated movie from a, a year or so ago. Mm. Uh, if you're an annual pass holder, you'll have an opportunity to make a reservation for a special upcoming limited quantity pre release sale, uh, at the downtown Disney district from uh, today through December 3rd, uh, today being November. 30th uh during the special pre-sale event you may also find special avengers campus merchandise available before the land opens so head on over to the annual pass holder facebook page beginning november 25th for more information which should be open by now because it's the 30th should be you would think should be you would think (laughs) all right uh in other sad uh news but i guess uh kind of necessary um uh, Disney has now announced another 4,000 layoffs, bringing the total headcount to approximately 32,000 uh, employees. So the Walt Disney Company is planning on uh, shedding uh, 32,000 employees by the end of March. Uh, wow. 4,000 more of those uh, previously announced as the corona pandemic uh, continues to hammer the uh, resort park business. Uh, The additional layoffs were disclosed in a filing to the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission on Wednesday uh, of last week, obviously. Uh, Disney employs around 223,000 people. I believe that's only in the U.S. Uh, Mm. And that's not just parks. That's the Disney company as a whole. So that's Disney Plus, ESPN, Hulu, the whole shenanigans. Uh, According Mm. to its most recent annual report, Report It already had announced plans to cut about 28,000 jobs in September. Uh, The media and entertainment giant warned that it may also be forced to scrap its dividends in the future and reduce or not make contributions to pension and retirement or even medical plans. Uh, What? Yeah, so you may be getting your uh, letter from Disney to tell you go find your own uh, health insurance on the open market, friends. Wow. Good luck with that. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, It is said that it could slash investment in television and film production and furlough or terminate even more employees. Uh, I heard there was even more coming uh, after the year, so I I don't know what this means. But the pandemic has slammed Disney Park business, which has more than 100,000 employees in the United States. The company has also been forced to suspend cruise ship sailings uh, and all you know, ABDs uh, and major film releases, which I think is the other thing that's hurting them, such as things like Black Widow, you know. And it's interesting because, you know, Disney sent this survey out to me. uh, I think I'm on the Disney Movie Council thing or whatever. And they're like, Mm -hmm. well, would you go to a movie? I'm like, yeah, if you put a movie new in the theaters. Like, (laughs) yes, I'll go, but I don't want to go see Monsters, Inc. for the 5,000th time when I have it on Disney Plus in my house, you know. Right. Uh, So there's that. Uh, News that the company is preparing to cut 1,000 more uh, jobs 
Then it announced in September, uh, attracted Senator Elizabeth Warren. She's been on the war path with Disney of late, and the same thing with, unfortunately, Abigail Disney, who have already condemned the company for the layoffs. Uh, Abigail Disney is the granddaughter of Roy O. Disney, uh, who founded the company in 1923 with, obviously, Walt Disney. Mm -hmm. Uh, So those two are, you know, when Disney... I guess the thing was they... They made announcements of layoffs and then gave themselves their bonuses back. And that is what triggered these two to go crazy on, uh, you know, Bob Chappick. Um, so we'll have to see. We'll have to see where this all, all heads and ends. But yeah. if you can and you want, come to the parks. Yeah. You know? Only one of those two ladies has a leg to stand on, you know. Mm. Meeting Abigail Disney for those right. of you who are not figuring it out. Yeah. Just senator. They give themselves pay raises all the time. They live off the government and then they complain about what yeah. private institutions do. Yeah. They have a retirement yeah, anyway. plan and the best medical benefits in the world. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Uh, Disney Cruise Line extends its susp- suspension of all departures, <laughs> continuing the fun news that we have today. Uh, as Disney Cruise Line uh, continues to refine their protocols. For their eventual return to service, they have made the decision to cancel all sailings through January 2021. Crap. Uh, Some friends of ours had a cruises planned for next month. Mm. Uh, Sailings are canceled on board the Disney Fantasy through January 30th, the Disney Wonder through January 27th, and the Disney Magic through January 28th, and the Disney Dream through January 29th. Guests booked on affected cruisings will who have paid their reservations in full will be offered the choice of a cruise credit uh, to be used for a future sailing or a full refund. Guests who have not paid their reservations in full will automatically receive a refund of what they've paid so far. Affected guests uh, will be receiving an email from Disney Cruise Line outlining details and next steps. That is incredibly tragic. Yeah. They're making it uh, difficult to have fun. (laughs) (laughs) Really kind of hard to have fun in this day and age. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, This next uh, piece of news uh, gets me excited. Period. End of story. (laughs) Uh, But Brightline, which is now owned by Virgin, uh, I think it's Virgin Trains, I think is the official company name, uh, and Disney reached a deal to build a high-speed train station at Disney Springs. All right, so where do you think they would put a train station at Disney Springs? I think it's got to be the Strawberry Lot. Strawberry Lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I think that is the only logical place to put it, you know. Uh, The private passenger rail service Brightline announced an agreement on Monday, this is last Monday, with Walt Disney World to build a station at Disney Springs as part of expansion plans from South Florida to Central Florida. The station would link the Disney shopping, uh, dining, and entertainment complex with Orlando International Airport and potentially, uh, potentially by 2022. So that's soon, not... Later, that's soon, uh, uh, is conditioned on Brightline obtaining the needed uh, government approvals, which I think they'll get. Uh, This is a quote from uh, Disney saying, uh, we are excited to work with Brightline as they pursue the potential development of a train station at Walt Disney World, a project that would support our local economy and offer a bold, forward-looking transportation solution for our community and our guests. Walt Disney World uh, Resort President Jeff Al said in a prepared statement, Brightline mm-hmm. is working on a $2.7 billion expansion of its service from West Palm Beach to Orlando International Airport that is expected to be completed in 2022. The prospect of a station near Disney was first made public in 2018, which we all got excited mm. about. Yeah, uh, buddy. When Brightline sought and later was awarded the right to execute lease agreements with the Florida Department of Transportation and Central Florida Expressway, because I think the two are going to be running parallel uh, Mm -hmm. to each other. 
uh, on a line that would link Orlando International Airport and Tampa. Brightline President Patrick Goddard said in a statement Monday that Brightline will offer a car-free connection in, to the millions of visitors. Well, hopefully we'll get back that number. From, from around the states uh, who plan to make a visit to Walt Disney World as part of their vacation plans. And I think that's the part that probably sold Disney. Well, car-free, right. they won't be able to leave, so they'll be able to spend all their time and money in our parks. And it won't cost the same thing because you don't have to worry about uh, transportation and yeah. parking. You can just come here and, and then we get tell, on a bus. We can tell Mears to get the hell lost. It doesn't cost us anything. They're operating yeah. it. Right, That's we don't right. have to pay mirrors for the service, so we save money and we get right. them stuck on our property for weeks at a time. They're stuck; they can't go anywhere. Oh, we forgot about Uber. Yeah. Now, currently, Brightline is uh, shut down due to the pandemic, but uh, it still is operational between Miami and West Palm, <laughs> which is uh, is good news. So I'm excited uh, for a train. Uh, you know, I, I. I live by the airport, and I had seen plans when they built this modal, transmodal, intermodal uh, uh, transportation center that buses and taxis and trains, and one of the lines was to International Drive, and one of the lines was to Walt Disney World. So that's going back like three, four years already, and uh, you know, I was like, oh, cool. Now, just recently, over the last month or so, there are actual train tracks leaving the intermodal station and heading towards the Disney area. Wow. So progress, my friends. <laughs> progress indeed. <laughs> to be fun. Yeah. Uh, well guys, if you'd like to support the show, if you'd like to help us do what we do here, go to patreon.com forward slash Disney parks podcast. Uh, obviously we want to thank our current contributors, our current patrons. We appreciate you guys very much. Uh, we want to uh, encourage you. Uh, we have uh, different levels of support. Uh, we have a $5 level, which gets you two extra shows a, a week, plus a, a $10 level. We get the Disney Plus news and review show. Uh, we've added some other levels, which will include uh, not only the shows, but also these uh, swanky Disney by the numbers t-shirts. And uh, we'll deliver them free to your door. And uh, we're also looking at the end of the year, encouraging people to level up. So if you're at the $5 level, why don't you level up to the $10 level? You'll not only get uh, the $10 level perks, you'll also get the extra Disney Plus podcast as well, as we'll send you a, uh, a hand, uh, hand, I keep forgetting the word. Embroidered. Embroidered Disney uh, Pixar hat. And if you've not joined yet, uh, sign up today and we will send you not only all the perks, but we'll get you your own Pixar hat. And if you've already got a hat and want something different, we'll figure that out as well. So go to patreon.com forward slash Disney Parks Podcast and uh, sign up today. Yeah. Uh, we've extended this to the end of December. So oh, if cool. you're looking to do it, uh, do it by the end of the year. All right. Uh, last week, John, we had a trivia question, and it was uh, Mike Wazowski in the movie Monsters uh -huh. makes up a fake musical to cover up the fact that he and Sully are in possession of Boo. Uh, they end <laughs> up actually performing the musical during the credits uh, for Monsters, Inc., and the title of that musical was Put That Thing Back Where It Came From, So Help Me. <laughs> so thank you mike for that lovely song put that thing back, back where it came from or so god help me, me. <laughs> uh you have to say with the billy crystal voice i can't uh, do that uh the this week's winner was uh vinny so uh we'd like to say it's in the mail vinny hey vinny it's in the freaking mail it's in the mail uh so this week's trivia question is this Mm. What did Syndrome call his superhero persona way before he debuted himself as a villain? So what did he call himself? Mm. John Lasseter. Because mm. he looks just like him. Very close. Very close. <laughs> uh, if you know the answer, 
send that to Disney Parks Podcast at Gmail dot com. Excellent. And I should mention, uh, you need to do it by uh, Saturday night because I start going through these on Sunday when I'm doing show notes. So if you send it Sunday, it's usually useless. So mm-hmm. send it before uh, Sunday is what I'd say. Anytime. Miss the boat on that. Yep. 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 Go ahead. Uh, you want to talk about that other thing? No. Okay, cool. Uh, Disneyland Paris has shared some updates on the Cars Route 66 road trip attraction. Uh, Recently, Disney Parks, uh, excuse me, Disneyland Paris uh, shared some updates and photos for the upcoming attraction. Cars Route 66 road trip. Too many names for it to be useful, Uh, which is set to debut in 2021 at the Walt Disney Studios Park. Think... Uh, kind of a conglomeration of uh, Hollywood Studios and a few other things uh, next to Disneyland Paris. Uh, the sneak peek shared a look at the attraction's new boarding system, which is inspired by mid-century modern architecture with several nods to the automotive world of Pixar's cars. Guests will enter the station through a tourist booth filled with maps, postcards, and other decorative items. The loading station, which is about halfway through construction, is the first building built outside the current perimeter of Walt Disney Studios Park. Once completed, it will be accessible to guests by a new road that extends from Toy Story Playland. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, Cars Route 66 road trip represents the first step in the multi-year expansion for Walt Disney Studios Parks, or what we like to call Disney's got it back under control. We're going to fix some problems. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Uh, that's all interesting, John, but mm. <laughs> Disneyland Paris is now going to remain closed until uh, early 2021. Well, good. They may be able to get this done in time. Yeah, so uh, Disneyland Paris has confirmed that the resort will remain closed until early 2021 as a result of the latest government measures for France related to the COVID. Uh, The resort was aiming to reopen for the holiday season, but now it appears that it will have to keep its gates closed until February 12th of 2021, at least. Unbelievable. Uh, For guests who had booked a a future trip during this closure period, options are available, including canceling or receiving a full refund or postponing the trip and booking new dates uh, to visit. Uh, Starting December 1st, guests will be able to rebook their summer break trips uh, at the current available rate uh, for arrivals starting April 1st. Uh, as for annual pass holders, the duration of those uh, and their benefits, depending on pass type, will extend the number of days the resort is temporarily closed. Uh, starting from the expiration date of the pass and monthly payments will be suspended from November 1st, 2020 through March of 2021. As of right now, new annual pass uh, sales are currently uh, suspended. Uh, to learn more about the temporary adjustments or cancellation policies, please visit DisneylandParis.com or contact your travel agent. You all need one of those. DisneyParksPodcast.com forward slash D2 travel. Um, this is uh, a- a- another crazy example of I don't understand how Disney thinks. <laughs> Disneyland Paris is closed. Walt Disney World open. Disneyland closed. Aulani open. Am I right? They're open? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hong Kong Disney, Disney Shanghai open. Mm-hmm. I don't get it. I need it, help. It, it's not them. It's the state or the country they're in, unfortunately. I know. That's, I know. That's driving this dilemma. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know it's crazy. Uh, Joffrey's Coffee is now printing your favorite Disney characters onto donuts. Cops around the world are rejoicing. Uh, <laughs> Joffrey's Coffee and Tea. Can, uh, can I get a Zoto- Zootopia? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Uh, coffee, Joffrey's Coffee and Tea has our hearts and 
arguably great coffee, uh, and humongous donuts. They're huge. No, that's the, uh, I, think, they're, I think that's the name of the specific donut company, Humongous it, Donut. Uh, mm, okay, and Humongous Donut. All right, I'll go with you on that. Let me, uh, I would Google. think it would be capitalized. Yeah, please do. Uh, there's no wonder uh, it's a must-visit stop on any trip to Walt Disney World. The Disney Springs location keeps upping the game, though. Their latest item, and as, un- as announced on Instagram, if I could read, does not only sound delicious, but is aesthetically pleasing as well. Uh, special only to the Disney Springs location is a new kind of Boston cream donut. Uh, we have to assume that they're huge, but what makes them stand out is the fact that you'll be able to get yours with printed coffee art on it. Uh, with Christmas designs or Disney characters to choose from, there are lots of options that would make a choice very difficult. Uh, these would go perfect with the Joffrey's latte topped with coffee art. Uh, why not get a Mickey topped coffee or a mini top donut? Uh, Instagram has been really just waiting for this to happen. Yeah. Uh, Joffrey's has been serving up printed coffee since 2017. A special ripple maker cough uh, machine makes coffee dust toner to print images on top of the foam of your beverage. You can get Disney characters, Joffrey's logo, <laughs> please. I'm here at Walt Disney world. Can I have the Joffrey's logo, please? Yeah. Uh, or even your own face to use the ripples app uh available limited quantities daily these donuts won't last long last long so be sure to head over to joffrey's on your next disney springs run and ask a barista for details uh i'd be very interested to try one of these yeah you can buy this machine for yourself to do it at home too really yeah this ripple machine is uh for her they have i think a consumer version that will do this i'm shocked you don't have one yeah uh, why? Because coffee's gone in ten seconds in my house. <laughs> That's true. It doesn't have a fighting chance. A donut, maybe a little bit longer. Yeah. <laughs> Put Buzz Lightyear's on your donuts. Yeah. <laughs> what are you having? <clears throat> I'm having Buzz Lightyear again. <laughs> I'm yeah. having a Buzz Lightyear Boston cream. <laughs> it only makes one kind, Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> I've ripped out all the other characters. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. All right, let's talk about Epcot. Shall we? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Disney downgrades Epcot World Celebration Festival Center to, you ready? A festival area. <laughs> How dare you? So remember when we said uh, the festival center went from a three-story to a one-story? Well, now mm-hmm. it went to dirt. The building is gone. It's just poof. We're not building a building. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, in a recent press release discussing the future of Epcot, Disney has seemingly downgraded the previously announced World Celebration Festival Center to a festival area. Previously, Disney stated that there would uh, be a taking a different approach to the multi-level festival center uh, seen in multiple concept art pieces, which which they sold to hell. Uh, Disney Uh even made a scale model of this festival center, uh, only to remove it from the Epcot experience and preview area following the COVID shutdowns. So somebody snuck in there and said, take that building out of there. Get that out. Get that out of there. Right. Uh, The concept art of the location, which showcased a rooftop overlook for the upcoming uh, harmonious uh, nighttime spectacular. Now, Disney has stated that the World Celebration Gardens, uh, seen in the concept art, will be surrounded by a newly reimagined festival area that will Mm. be home to the ever-changing events in a unique environment. Disney carefully worded to the press release to omit the words festival center that wording that would have been uh in previous statements now mm-hmm, it's just mm-hmm. festival area so of course worst case scenario would be that the area where the festival center was slated to go will simply just turn into astroturf area dirt <laughs> with festival kiosks <laughs> that can be brought uh, in, and Disney has done in years, so they'll just drop a bunch of booths there. 
maybe they could do even like festival food trucks if they really wanted to. Yeah, you know, they'll probably make that happen. You know, really go all out. Uh, this would hardly represent the sweeping new vision uh, for Epcot that would uh, represent the value engineering of the area. Disney has not provided an update of any renderings for the World Celebration area uh, without uh, without the multi-story festival center. But their updated statements since the theme park reopened sh- strongly suggest a trip back to the drawing boards. I think they're struggling right now with everything that needs to happen in Epcot that they don't potentially maybe have the money or want to expend money. Uh, Listen, listen, Disney can easily go to a bank and get money. Easily can get money from any bank. Any bank would lend Disney money because they have a very good bank rating. But do they want to spend that when they're struggling, do they want to go to the bank, get something at a stupid interest rate to build more buildings in a Epcot? Or do they just want to wait until they can get back and do it later? I, I think that's what they're struggling with right now. Yeah. yeah. But here's here's my here's my problem with that. Epcot has never been a really planned well park. It was always two parks that they squeezed together. Yeah. And now they're they're kind of being treated like the redheaded stepchild again. Yeah, yeah. You know, now I said that before about you know Hollywood Studios a little bit because you know it was the half day park for a long time. Mm-hmm. Now it's the go to park. Mm-hmm. So you know, I don't want to I don't want to be too judgmental, but at the same time, it's like this is this is what happens when a pandemic hits. Before I start launching, everybody's like, "But John, there's a pandemic going on." Mm-hmm. That's true. That's yeah. true. But you know, there's always a pandemic or a hurricane or something right. that'll always affect. Uh, but at the same time, it's like this is what happens when you make these huge grand announcements, and you, you know you plan so far out in advance. I got my first real taste of that during the new Fantasyland stuff. Yeah. There's supposed to be a bunch of stuff there that never came to pass. Right. Now, that wasn't about the pandemic. That was just about the they 15th. ran out of Yeah, they ran out of passion for it. Yeah. Yeah. So here's an interesting thing I was uh, listening to this week too that uh most of the OG imagineers that helped build Epcot are most of them are gone. Right. Uh Tom Fitzgerald <laughs> Uh, Tony Baxter, Joe Rohde, who's retiring. There's about five. It's about five OG uh, Imagineers that are left. So what happens when all of them are completely gone from the company or the planet? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, what happens to something like an Epcot? You know, will we lose that vision of what Epcot was supposed to or should have or could have been? Have we lost it already, and we're now just trying to band-aid fix it back to reality? And we have heard the rumor of, you know, intellectual property, Disney character stuff going in every country in the back. And they are working their way. You know, they got two. Yeah. They got two. Well, they got more than that. Morocco's up for grabs now. I think it's going to be Aladdin, so they're going to get three. Uh, so, you know... Can they put more intellectual property attractions in the back to make it more of a theme park and not mm-hmm. a dining experience and something up front? We'll mm-hmm. have to see. Not the same. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, you mentioned Joe Rody earlier, and I'll go ahead and preface this. Before you start launching, hear the whole story out before you start going to this website I'm going to share with you. <laughs> Retiring Disney anime at uh, Disney Imagineer Joe Rohde is hosting a virtual garage sale of artifacts and memorabilia. Hang on. Legendary Disney Imagineer Joe Rohde announced his retirement earlier this week, with his final day being January 4th of 2021. Rohde is now hosting a virtual garage sale through eBay of some of the incredible artifacts, mainly artifacts, and personal memorabilia he's collected over the years. Now, on the uh, Instagram page, Rody has posted pictures of each item available along with stories of each artifact. Uh, the shop, uh, you can shop the items currently on his eBay page. 
And I'm going to give you the uh, the Instagram page first, which is at Rody Garage Sale. And Rody is spelled R O H D E Garage Sale. Now, the website, before you're thinking, oh my God, this is it. I'm going to get my hands on some, you know, memorabilia from Animal Kingdom or Alani or any of the number of amazing things that Joe Rody has built over the years. No, 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 no. Nay, nay. Nay, nay. We're talking about like art pieces from Uganda. You could go to ebay.com forward slash USR forward slash uh, Rody Garage Sale. Again, R-O-H-D-E-G Garage Sale, you know. Current bids range somewhere in the $160 range all the way up to, I saw something for like four fifty-five. There are four items on there right now. And uh, a couple of them are absolute nightmare fuel. Yeah. yeah. So you're not going to get anything with a mouse on it. You're not going to get any stuff from the, you know, mm. you're going to get stuff from villages for places that he's visited that he no longer wants to keep. I'm assuming these are things in his office that he doesn't want to bring home, or his wife said, don't bring any more crap home from that office. <laughs> yeah, don't bring any of that nightmare fuel home, Joe Rody. I'm assuming those are the two things. Uh, and you have to go read Joe's uh, goodbye. Uh, he kind of uh, you know, says that he, he wants to get back to traveling, and Disney has kind of restricted him from doing that in the last couple of years. Uh, so go read uh, his story, too, if, if you're a Joe Rody fan. Um, Wait, you, you mean Disney wanted him to do his job and not travel around the world gallivanting? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He doesn't look like uh, Indiana Jones. Yeah. Well, he would wanted to be Indiana Jones. <laughs> Don't we all? Yeah, exactly. Uh, in other sad news, uh, uh, because California is having a struggling problem again, uh, the Walt Disney Family Museum is now closed again. Uh, so Disney World and parts of Disneyland Resort have reopened. When we say parts, we mean downtown and one street. <coughs> um, the Walt Disney Family Museum uh, also closed uh, down due to the worldwide pandemic and recently reopened to the public on November 5th. But now uh, Disney has announced that the museum will be closing its doors again. The Walt Disney Family Museum will close beginning a Sunday, November 29th. This is in response to San Francisco reaching their purple tier of uh, Corona. Uh, the museum is honoring uh, the life and legacy of Walt Disney and has carried out several online programs uh, throughout the closures. It's uncertain exactly when uh, the museum will open up again, but uh, there will be uh, a lockout. I will tell you, sign up for the Disney Family Museum newsletter because they've had a lot, and they still do, of upcoming free things. Now, you can <laughs> join, get a membership to the museum. Uh, obviously, that's how you get into the museum. With, or, mm -hmm. you know, It's part of your membership. You get free entrance I don't know, once, twice a month, whatever. But uh, And that allows you to some other programs that uh, the public can get to. But there's a lot of public, good public programs right now that you can uh, get your, you know, your little eyes on and uh, sign up. I've signed up for a bunch of them and they're, they're very good and very informative and entertaining. Right. Cool. Yeah. It's, um, this is crazy. There's so much craziness in the world yeah. right now. Yeah. Uh, okay, so on, on a piece of good news, uh, if you were worried about where you're going to eat breakfast at the Magic Kingdom, fear not, my friends, because the Friar's Nook is serving breakfast once again at the Magic Kingdom. Yeah, come on. Uh, when you're visiting Magic Kingdom, every minute counts. And if you're looking to do it all in a single day, which you kind of have to at this point, eating on the go is a great way to maximize your time in between attractions, cavalcades, and more. As Disney World continues its phase reopening, more dining locations have been reopening and expanding their menu. So now a popular counter service spot has been brought back, uh, have, has brought back their breakfast menu. Uh, while we're uh, while some people were walking through the Magic Kingdom, they noticed that the Friars Nook is officially open for breakfast service. 
After speaking with a cast member, they learned that the breakfast at Friar's Nook is being served from 9 to 11 daily. The breakfast menu is currently the same as it was before with no new additions. Uh, if you have a healthy appetite, first thing in the morning, you can pick up the breakfast sandwich, which comes with bacon, egg, and cheddar cheese served on a multigrain croissant, which... I would probably prefer a little bit more than that if I'm really super hungry. The sandwich does come with potato barrels on the side. Think tater tots. Mm-hmm. Uh, it only costs eight dollars and seventy nine cents. Mm. Uh, as you already know, Friar's Nook is the place to be if you're a fan of loaded tots or loaded barrels. Mm-hmm. Uh, luckily, you could get their tasty sausage or gravy tots in the in the morning for just five dollars and forty nine cents. Sign me up. That, that sounds uh, finally, better than the other item. <laughs> yeah, it does actually, uh, and it's probably a, a smaller portion. So sign me up for two. Uh, finally, for a little something sweeter, you can pick up some cinnamon sugar donuts for just four ninety nine. So yay, more places to eat. Thanks, Friar Tuck or Friar Nook. I for opening back will up. Probably guarantee that it's mobile order. You will not get it at the mm, yeah yeah. You know, and then you're gonna have to go find some place to eat because it's that area is small, and if mm-hmm. they're six feet apart, where there are three tables there, although, well, they those tables they can't move because they are cemented into the concrete. But I'm sure they have mm-hmm. ways of closing them off. Anyway, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, anyway, uh, go visit our store at T Public. That's T E E Public dot com. Uh, we have a nice mask like this honoring Walt uh, and the nine old men. You can see that right there. Uh, I put up a sticker. It's, uh, you know, our logo with our tagline. Uh, we'll see you in the parks. But there's a bunch of great uh, things you get there. Most of the mask money goes to a charity. So you can go uh, shop there and uh, know that you're doing good. And uh, that's it. Go check it out. tpublic.com forward slash Stores forward slash Disney dash parks dash podcast. Hey kids, how about a little headline news? And now the headline news. Do you have your uh, voice ready? I don't, I don't have mine. I, I don't. I don't I have my ready. I can, I can make work. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, David Prowess, the uh, actor who played Darth Vader in Star Wars, uh, passed away in 85. So we're down to two. Harrison and Hamill. Yep. Yep. Two of uh, mm. the OGs are still here. Two. Well, we still have George Lucas, so there's a plus. Well, that's true. Uh, there are new fireworks bursts at the Magic Kingdom, so during each of the uh, sweater changes uh, of the projection show, there's a pew, boo, 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 yeah, it was not. It wasn't a lot of fireworks. Don't get excited. No, yeah, don't get. But it. But it yeah. was cool. It was yeah. cool. We've got yeah. some video up there as well. Yeah, seeing anything <laughs> above the castle is a is a dream. Yes, yep. it's great. Yep. Uh, Sprinkles, uh, the cake cupcake. cupcake place at Disney Springs, uh, is debuting a a cannoli a cannoli cupcake. You're going to take it a cannoli, you're going to put it in a cupcake. What are you doing? What are you doing with the cannoli? the other way around. <laughs> you're going to take a cupcake, you put it in a cannoli. Hey, the cannoli's a cannoli. You can make a cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's probably great. All right. If you were on the internet last week and you saw that minivans were for sale uh, for $45,000, uh, put your checkbook away. They are not. There are no minivans for sale. They were just at a dealership getting some work done, you know, yada, yada, yada. Don't get excited. You can't go buy one. I know you're all excited, but you can't. Uh, two, I think it's the one at 528 in Osceola, uh, got the official brand new shiny entrance uh, redo. It looked mm-hmm. good. 
I I was wondering how they were going to do the background of, you know, where Mickey and Minnie are. You know, it's got like the little Mickey. I would have liked to have seen how they did that. <laughs> if anybody yeah. has video of, were they hand painting the Mickeys in there? Was it some kind of sticker they cut and threw on there? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anybody has know. how how it's done, I'd, I'd like to see that. I, I, I would I just, love to know too. Yeah, curiosity. Yeah. But it was very interesting because I did see pictures that they, I guess, I, uh, I'm going to say sandblasted. The pillars uh, where, you know, it's the red bricks, but the layers of paint that you could see, it was like, oh, my God, those have been painted numerous times. <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple. Yeah. So it was very interesting. Two are done. Uh, I'm sure what, we got another two to go. Two or three. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for Disneyland fans or pass holders, should I say, uh, Disney is now sending full refund checks to premier annual pass holders due to the extended Disneyland resort closure. Now, why only, <laughs> why only the premier people, obviously they're the ones that, that paid the most, but why not all Disneyland annual pass holders? Why are they just starting with this group <laughs> and figuring it out from there? Because these guys really <laughs> only, but they get three months, January, February, March. And yeah, then, I know, right? And then they're not really going back till next year. But here's the magic question that you have to ask yourself after you get your right. refund. Will Disney sell you a new annual pass next year? Yeah, that's a heck of a question. That's the question you have to ask yourself. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I don't. You know, they're saying full refund. I don't know what that means. Full f- minus three months or full were just January to December. You, we're giving you the whole year back. Right. You know, so, I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? So if any of my premier Disneyland fan friends out there, if you have or know, you know or you've received your uh, thing, um, you know, I'd be interested to find out what, what they are actually giving you back. Yeah, because us for us it was a prorated thing, so I'd be interested. 